and all the time, and I'm in the right place. <laughs> Amen. Some of y'all didn't say that. <laughs> Amen. Look, turn your neighbor and say, I'm here to receive. We're going to actually do the baptisms just a little bit later. We're waiting on David Rose, so I'm going to go ahead and do the teaching part. And then at the end of, of that, uh, we're going to have a time of ministry and prayer. And it's just going to be a good time. Amen? Amen. And a, a time of baptism. Some you say, well, I didn't bring any clothes and I might be feeling the urge. Uh, well, we'll take care of you. Amen? We'll pray for you and let you leave wet. Amen? <laughs> So if you do feel the urge, we'll just uh, grab a towel and wrap it around you and, and send you on your way, amen? And, uh, so whatever the Lord leads. If you have your Bibles tonight, I'd like for you to, to turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And uh, I have finished up a, a, a series primarily on prayer and intercession and dealing with the intimacy of God. And so... Uh, that's done in the inner quarter, the inner area. And tonight, I want to go further with that, and I want to begin to focus on the lampstand inside the holy area, which is basically the gifts as well as the fruits of the Spirit. And so I'm going to be talking about that over a period of time, dealing with the, the Holy Spirit as well as the gifts and the fruits of the Spirit. How many people are excited? So uh, I want to teach you how to work and operate in the gifts of, in the fruits of the Spirit, and with that to work accurately. Uh, most of the time we leave it up to a pastor or someone that we know that is uh, uh, gifted and a, a prayer warrior to pray, but the new, good news is this, is that we are all a part of the priesthood of all believers, we're all a part of the kingdom of God, and with that we're all royalty. And so that means that when we leave this place, that we are to express that authority out there. Why is it that we become so comfortable in using the gifts inside the church and we're so uncomfortable in spreading the good news and the gospel outside the church? Jesus went about healing all that were sick and oppressed of the devil, and that took place outside the temple and outside the synagogue. Huh? So with that in mind, uh, you and I need to understand God is calling us to a place to where we are literally exercising the gifts of the Spirit wherever we are, in the marketplace, looking for opportunities, expressing the kingdom of God there, showing royalty there. Amen? Amen. Showing them the life that we have is so much far greater and demonstrating it in front of them. Amen? amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Uh, if you're there, say amen. amen. If you're not, say oh me. Okay, all right. Chapter 12. Now, what is the purpose of the gifts of the Spirit? It is not to edify one person, to build a person up. Before I go any further, I want to say this. The gifts of the Spirit are just that. They are the gifts that belong to the Spirit. They do not belong to you. And, and God manifests those gifts severally as He wills. I find in my life that there's been different times that a, a, a gift of the Spirit would manifest itself. One such time was when I was praying for a lady that fell on black ice in her driveway and she cracked her back, and I think that I've expressed that before. And I went to her house not expecting anything, but as I was praying, a supernatural faith came on me, a gift of faith. And I just literally put my hand on her immediately, and it was like lightning. Or thunder, I can't explain it. Literally went through her body, and she got up and started walking, and she had not been able to do that at all. And was instantly healed right there on the spot uh, of two cracked vertebra in her back. Everybody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Went back to the doctors, and it was verified. So it was a supernatural faith that came upon me. So in, in your life, you must understand that these gifts are the gifts of the Spirit. As you study the gifts of the Spirit, there's only one uh, gift uh, that is given to you that is for you. Every other gift that is given is for everyone else. 
as you minister to them. The only gift that is for you is what is called tongues or praying in the Spirit. Okay, that's the only one that's for you to build you up, to edify you. Now there's tongues and there's interpretation of tongues, but the interpretation of tongues is the same as prophecy. And so that is to be interpreted, but there's a gift that you can receive, the gift of tongues that builds you up, that edifies you, that gives you the support that you need. So that is the gift that God gives that helps uh, build you up in your own spirit. Now, people say, well, now, Pastor, you know, uh, I just don't know about this tongues stuff. I want you to know I served the devil for 17 years of my life, and I never spoke in tongues once. And I hear people say, well, tongues is of the devil. Well, I got news for you. I served him that long, and I didn't do it one time, but the moment that I started serving Jesus Christ, the Spirit of God came on me, and I began to speak in a language that I did not know, nor did I understand, and I began to communicate divinely with the divine. <laughs> and, you know, if you're going to take and come against tongues and those different things, you might as well get rid of your New Testament because it was written by people that spoke in tongues. How are we doing tonight? Just messing with you right now, amen? Everybody, I should have stayed at home tonight. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it says this, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. I could just stop right there. <laughs> I could stop right there because there's so many people that have built up walls that hinder themselves from the gifts of the Spirit or even receiving the Spirit of God. It is a gift. Why do you not want to receive something that is from God? It is the same as salvation. You, you receive the Holy Spirit, yes, at salvation, but the, the baptism of the Spirit or when the gifts of the Spirit come into our life, it is it is something that is a manifestation that comes out of us. We receive salvation through the baptism of the Spirit. We give. Y'all getting this yet? So that's the whole purpose of the baptism of the Spirit is to give that which God has given to us. So as we look at this, there are people that are ignorant. Everybody say ignorant. I didn't say that. Paul did. Amen. But there might be some ignorant people here tonight. And you still want to be ignorant. Amen? Don't amen me. That's all right. Let me read this in the Amplified. Now about the spiritual gifts, listen, the special endowments of supernatural energy. Did you hear that? The special endowments of supernatural energy. energy. Brethren, I do not want you to be misinformed. So many of us have become misinformed when it comes to the gifts of the Spirit. And so... In this process tonight, what I want to do is try to begin, even not only this night, but the Sunday nights that are coming, to inform you how to operate and how to use the gifts of the Spirit, not just in the church, but in the world. How to turn on your spiritual discernment that when you're in a, in a line with a cashier, that you will be able to discern and know what's going on in the person's life as you're standing there and be able to speak to it and bring healing and wholeness in their life. And show them the power and the demonstration of God. I've been in lines in supermarkets and Walmart. And I, I, I would be standing there and I would know what was going on in someone's life. I could see the brokenness. I could sense it that was there. And I knew that they were going through divorce or they were going through something. And I would speak to it. You know, as I'm standing here next to you, are you going through something? Is there something that I can pray about? With you that's all you, you don't have to get up there oh God's telling me bless God brother hallelujah you're going through divorce and, and God is just no do it in love you're going to scare them away amen don't be religious as you do it love them you know as I was standing here I, I, I just felt just impressed just to talk to you just for a minute can I pray with you and with that begin to open up and begin to minister in the gifts of the spirit I've been in situations uh, when I was in the military I was in a five-ton truck and as I was sitting there talking with this guy or going down the road the Lord told me that he was dealing with homosexuality in his life I had no clue I mean this guy was buff y'all with me tough rough and tough and mean and 
and showing muscles and doing all these different things. And the Spirit of the Lord revealed that to me as, as we were just going down the road. I had no clue. He, he'd talk about girls. and You know how guys are. I'm just being real here. He's talking about guys doing all these different things. And, and all of a sudden, the Spirit of the Lord spoke that to me. And I looked over at him and said, Brother, I said, I want you to know how much that God loves you. I said, I know what your biggest problem is in your life. And you're in denial. And I began to talk to him about his lifestyle, his secret lifestyle. And God revealed it right there on the spot. By the time it was over, he was trapped with me for two hours. Glory to God. <laughs> Couldn't get out because we were in convoy. Amen. Ain't going nowhere. You got out and trapped. And by the time it was over, <coughs> by the end of the trip, he was crying. And I sat right there and I laid him to the Lord Jesus Christ. And he repented of all of his sins. You see, that's what the gifts of the Spirit are for. Is to begin to discern and see what's going on in someone's life. That you can bring them closer to God and more into his presence. So why is it that in the, the body of Christ we become so fearful and we want to remain ignorant or literally carry this misinformation about the gifts of the Spirit? If the enemy could do anything, he would try to stop us from being the church and the kingdom people that God's called us to be by not allowing us to get out and do that which God's called us to do. Moving in power and demonstration of the Spirit of God. And so with that, he wants us to remain misinformed. He wants us to just keep coming to church. He wants us to be good people. Hello. He just wants you to come here, be good, put your dollar in place, and don't be, a, don't be a, a, a demonstrative. Do not be a person that's demonstrating the gifts and the glory of God in your life. Because if we were the church and we rose up and we begin to exercise the gifts of the Spirit the way that God wants us to, we would be a driving force in this community. There would not be one stone unturned by the power and the presence of God. Oh, yes, you can sit right here and agree with me, say amen, but you've not done it yet, folks. Everybody say, I love my pastor. <laughs> You've not done it. So that's why we're doing this, to talk about it. We come here, we get blessed, we get healed. God's blessing us and even using us. But guess what? He wants to use you out there. Impressions that He'll place upon your heart as you're sitting in your house to call someone. Where do you think that impression's coming from? To minister to them. To bring hope into their life. The shower is a great place to begin to pray and listen to God. How are we doing tonight? You can, you can get cleaned up, hallelujah, and, and just pray as you're praying there and just begin to listen to God as you're in the shower. And God gives me someone to pray for every single day in the shower. I love it. I take a shower every day. I hope y'all do. <laughs> uh, uh, but <laughs> hope y'all do that. Uh, but when I get in there, God will give me someone to, to pray for, and I know something's going on in their life. Just uh, uh, this past week, week and a half ago, it was Kim Lester. I mean, it was just as plain as day. Just pray for Kim, pray for Kim, pray for Kim. Uh, and, and done the same thing with Boots and other people in the church where God just put someone on my heart and my mind, and I just continue to pray for them. And so if I come to you and I'm asking, you know, is there something going on? It's because God's put a burden on my heart. And you know what I discover when that happens? is That's when God's saying, you're their pastor now. You hear me? You're their pastor because I'm becoming concerned with your concerns. Whew. I'm starting to feel your infirmities even though I don't know really what you're going through. And see, that's the gifts of the Spirit as they're beginning to operate in my own heart and my life. For you as your pastor. Wow. You see it? So, let's keep going here. Therefore, <laughs> number two, sorry. You know that you were Gentiles, carried away into these dumb idols, however you were led. Everybody say dumb idols. Yeah. We have all kinds of dumb idols in our world today, whether you realize it or not. 
for being led astray. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed. And no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Jesus is Lord. What are we saying when we say that? We're saying Jesus is God. He's Adonai. He's Elohim. He, he is Jehovah. He is Yahweh. He is uh, uh, Ra, Yahuwah. Yahuwah. I'm trying to get it right. Yahuwah. He is Yahuwah. Everybody say Yahuwah. <laughs> That's the actual pronunciation of the unnameable name of God or Yahweh. Amen. Yahuwah. Um, so Jesus is Yahuwah. He is Yahweh. He is God. You cannot say that unless the Spirit of God's giving you the ability to say that. Amen? Now, it says this. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. So there are many different types of gifts, but it's the Spirit. The same Spirit that's giving it. Amen? Then it says there are different Differences of ministries, but the same Lord. There are diversities of activities, but it's the same God who works all in all. So we see here there's, there's a breakdown uh, of, the, of the gifts of the Spirit. There, there's differences in ministries, activities, and then manifestations. And so those are the three areas that the gifts of the Spirit line up in. Okay? So, um, but it says this, the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for what? For the profit of all. The profit of who? All. So the gift of the Spirit is not given to profit you. It's to profit every person that you come in contact with. When God manifests something, it's not to profit. You know, oh, bless God, hallelujah, I have the gift of healing. Oh, just come and let me lay my hands on you. Let me anoint you with oil and bless God. You will be healed. Arr, hallelujah. Amen. You got to learn how to say God with three syllables. God. Amen. How are we doing tonight? No, it's not about you. It's, it's, it's about the whole body. And God manifests these that it would benefit everyone else, not you. It's not to glorify you, it's to glorify Him. Can I keep going? I'm going to. For to one is given, listen, the word of wisdom through the Spirit. To another, a word of knowledge through the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healings, plural, healings. By the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as He wills. So the Spirit of God literally distributes these as they're needed. As he wills. There's times in your life where you need a gift of faith. You're crushed and you need a gift of faith. You need a supernatural faith. So God will give that to you. There's times in your life when uh, you, you might need a prophetic word. And God may manifest that. Where he's speaking directly to you. Amen. Y'all with me? So he manifests these as he wills. Now I've been in churches where they try to stir it up. Y'all with me? I was in one church of God church. Woo, you know, that's where they say God with three syllables. Church of my God. <laughs> that's all right. My grandmother was church of God. I can say that. She had the beehive hair do. Amen. You know what I'm saying? She'd get happy and bobby pins would start flying. Choo, 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 choo. <laughs> But I was in one church, and, and there was nothing happening. You know what I'm saying? The preacher got up, and then there was nothing happening. And all of a sudden, I mean, they had the guest evangelist that was there. Nothing was going on. All of a sudden, the preacher kind of, I watched him. He kind of looked around side to side like this, standing in the back. And all of a sudden, he went, Woo! Glory! Hallelujah! And took off running. It 
was nothing but the flesh. And that doesn't profit anything. It's got to be a manifestation of the Spirit, and God's got to do it as He wills. Some of y'all say, well, now, Pastor, I've seen you be, you know, out here doing these different things, but you notice every single time I'm praying, and it's never going the same way. We're always moving in a flow. Something's different. It's happening, but it's always different. I never know the direction that God's going to lead. That's how that it works. You're always operating with the Spirit and in the Spirit listening to his voice as he's bringing forth direction if you've been on wednesday nights you know that it's always different am i right it's never the same because i'm trying to listen and get the approval of god which direction to go as the spirit of god's leading and uh, listening for that unction uh, from the spirit of god so as we look at this we see that the spirit of god is given according to verse 7 To profit all. And as we look at this in the Amplified, it it literally is, it says this, but to each one is given the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, the evidence of spiritual illumination of the Spirit for good and profit. Everybody say good. So why would we want the Spirit of God to be manifested among us? It's for good. It's always to do good. Not evil, but good. John Wimber says that wherever the Spirit of God manifests, that you have to allow it to be a, sometimes even be a trial and error as people are trying to learn how to move in the gifts of the Spirit. People are going to make mistakes, but the, God is so appreciative of faith and us stepping out in faith at times as we're growing up in the Lord. You know, and that's where grace comes in. Um, I heard uh, someone that stood up in one church and said, had a prophetic word for the whole congregation. (laughs) And the prophetic word came forth, Ah, the God of Abraham who led you through the wilderness uh, as Abraham brought you through and went through this big old long discourse. And after it was all over and everybody sat down, they go, Stood back up. I, the Lord, have made a mistake. It was not Abraham. It was Moses. <laughs> Everybody say hallelujah. I think that, you know, people probably kind of figured out what was going on. But in the issue of, of everything, it's like this. We are human vessels. And the Spirit of God works through us, and sometimes it gets a little clouded, so you have to kind of weigh it out as it's coming forth. And, and, and you know, take the good parts, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Everybody say hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. All right. So, but anytime something, a gift of the Spirit comes forth, and it, God's using someone, it's to profit everyone. That's what we see in the Word of God. Uh, 1 Corinthians 14, 12, if you'll look there with me. Y'all enjoying this? Chapter 14, verse 12, it says this. Even so you, since you are zealous for spiritual gifts, let it be for the edification of the church that you seek to excel. So everybody say edification. Edification Edification of the church. So we see here once again that this... the gifts of the Spirit are to edify and build up. Now, what I want to do now is redefine your definition of church because I really feel that needs to happen today. You have thought of church as being this group of people here, uh, that this is the church. No, this is not the church. Turn to your neighbor and say, this is not the church. We have a, a modern-day thinking of when it comes to to what the word church means. A church was a group of people, listen to where I'm headed. A church was a group of people that would set in judgment, that were set up as an ecclesia or a government in a village or in a town. They would literally make decisions as they would pass judgments on other people. Remember as we talked about the sandal covenant and being in the town area, the the area there, and uh, as as they... uh, were uh, taking the sandals and making judgment and passing judgment. It was a town group 
or individuals that would be set up to help make governing decisions. Now I want you to think about that. Look at your neighbor and say, we're the church. What does that mean? That means that you and I are the individuals here on earth now that are making governmental decisions on behalf of the Lord Jesus Christ. His government shall what? Rest upon His... Everybody say government. Do you all realize that we're the ones that are here right now governing this world? And when we are taking out, the Holy Spirit's not going to be here, and so all hell's going to break loose in chaos. Can, can y'all hear me right now? I'm about ready to preach. Huh? So why is it that God wants to give us the gifts of the Spirit? It's because we are the governing authority here on this earth making decisions that can change as we pray and speak forth the Word of God. His government now rests upon His body, which is the church, us. So that's why we need the gifts of the Spirit. And it's to edify and build up the church or build us up. Why? So we can also build up the world. We can change the environment wherever we go. When you walk into a room, your very countenance should change what's going on in that room. When you walk into your workplace, they should be, oh, Lord, they should be, oh, Lord, here they come. Oh, Lord Jesus. They, oh, Oh, there they are. You know, they, they should be drawn to you because you're displaying the very kingdom of God in your heart and in your life. And you're the one that can bring hope and the kingdom of God as it's displayed in front of them. What, what, what we do? Oh, I'm just, I'm just barely making it through. You know, God's good, though. He's been with me the whole time. They really want some of that, I tell you. Amen. They, they really want what you've got. But if you're walking in, oh, I, this is what's going on in my life, but I'm more than a conqueror. And I know that Jesus Christ is Lord and He's got this. Amen. He's taking care of this situation. You're walking and you're speaking faith. They're going, man. And you're making decisions that affect your life and all of that. They're starting to affect people that are around you. And they're literally drawn to what you have as you're walking in the Spirit of God. Is that not beautiful? Look to your neighbor and say, we're the church. Does that redefine the definition for you? Jesus said this, listen, the gates of hell will not prevail against what? Church. My church, my government that I'm going to establish. Y'all got it? We are in a governing place now where we can actually release the gifts of the Spirit by God using us to change cultures, environments, schools, families, by the very things that we pray and speak as we move in the gifts of the Spirit. Jesus would walk into towns and the towns would be turned upside down as He cast out a demon as a man was in gathering. That whole area was turned upside down. By the time Jesus came back, 4,000 people had gathered because they heard about this man that was mad, but now he was sane. That's the authority and the government of the spiritual gifts that God wants to be at work in your life. I'm preaching. Is anybody here? This is good stuff. Whew. That's the authority that you and I need to express beyond these walls. But oh, bless God, hallelujah, I'm comfortable here. I'm safe here. You know, I can, I can practice casting out demons on my friends. Amen. No. I, I know them real well. I can practice praying for them. How we doing? What are you going to do when you meet that lunatic at Food City? That works in the grocery line. No, I'm just kidding, brother. <laughs> what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Really? Are you going to wait till somebody else comes along? 
Are you going to listen to the Spirit of God and realize that all authority and power has been given to you to minister as a son and a daughter of the King of Kings? That anything you ask in my name, it shall be done. And so as you begin to exercise that, then what will happen is that you will see the power of God demonstrated and they will be set free. Mm. So, everybody say the gifts of the Spirit are to profit the church and everyone. Amen. It's not just for us. And we think that the gifts of the Spirit just need to be manifested here. We've got it backwards, folks. We're supposed to be out there. That's where Jesus did his ministry, was out there healing the sick, raising the dead, cleansing the lepers. How do you think he did that? He came here to display what you and I are supposed to be doing. How are we doing? So, you might be zealous for spiritual gifts, but the issue is that it's to edify and excel. Everybody say excel. excel. To move the church forward, the governing authority forward. Not the church, the governing authority that you have. That it can be displayed and seen in the world. Wow. Totally changes the meaning, doesn't it? It's not inside the building, it's the government is being displayed out there. Everybody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. I had a little tickle, so I need to take care of that. Amen? Plus, it's diet Mountain Dew. Thank you. That's the holy juice right there. Amen? I'm just kidding. What else are the gifts of the Spirit for? If you'll turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 with me again. The gifts of the Spirit are also used to form us as the body of Christ. Okay? Used to form a body. It says in this, For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. So what do we see here? We're seeing a unity. Uh, the, the only way possible way to form a body is to have organs and that they properly relate to each other and a function of these gifts so as the gifts of the spirit are on display and at work what that means is that they all should be working together in unity in the body later on paul writes that all things everybody say all things let all things be done in decency and in order if you have a word from God, sometimes you just need to wait a minute and test it yourself before you speak it out. And hold on to it. Just don't go ahead and just blurt it. It might not be the right time. I've, I've seen people disrupt the service, and it, it was not the right time at that moment. It could, it could have waited just a few minutes, and they didn't present it correctly. And we have to make sure that the body is in operation together as the gifts of the Spirit are manifesting. You know, there's a time that you might feel a tongue or a prophetic word or, or, or be led to pray for someone to, to be healed, but it's not going to be right in the middle of something when it's going to, to, to bring chaos. God is not the author of confusion. And so if, if you have a word, or you, you need to wait and make sure that it's lined up properly in the right time. If you feel like you need to pray for someone, you just don't get up right then. If there's something else going on, you wait and be in tune with the Spirit and say, God, make the opportunity. I feel it in my spirit. I feel that I'm being led. But I, I'm just going to wait till that time comes and you will present the opportunity. There's people that have told me stories here about Dave and Judy and how that they would be here in the parsonage and... and uh, Someone would pull up and they would walk out. Oh, we just knew you were coming. We knew you were coming. We had you on our heart and our mind. And, and God had already put it on their heart and say, God made the opportunity. Y'all got it? So that's kind of how that it works. You, you've got to wait for the right opportunity to listen uh, for the Spirit of God as He presents that. Isn't this good? 
So with that, uh, the body has got to be operating correctly and being in unity and one with the Spirit of God. You know, I eat first. I have to take something on the table and eat. Y'all with me? And then it's got to go down to my stomach. Then my stomach's got to digest it. Y'all with me? Then it, it makes its way, and it, when it gets into the intestines, what happens is that's when it literally breaks down it and it gives you the nutrition that you need. It's in that area. But it's a process. And it's the same thing when it comes to the gifts of the Spirit. You know, we, we take it in, we're receiving it from God, we've got to digest it and make sure that it's lining up with God. And then from that, then it can bring nutrition to the whole body. Isn't that beautiful? It's the same process. And so many times we may hear from God and we'll speak it out of turn or we may even speak it the wrong way. God has given me words of knowledge in people's lives. I had one situation where a young girl, it was on a Christmas Eve communion. I'll never forget it. Christmas Eve communion, she comes in with her grandmother. And as she's there, the Spirit of the Lord tells me she's pregnant. Now, what are you going to do with that information? There is no way humanly possible I could know this, but I had this information that the Spirit of God gave to me, and I could have embarrassed the fire out of her and created such chaos and spoke this thing out right in front of her grandmother, and her grandmother had been totally shocked. Are you all with me? And then the Spirit of God began to reveal how she was getting ready to have an abortion with this child. And I'm like, oh my goodness, what, what am I going to do? What am I going to say? As I'm here at this altar and I'm praying for her, getting ready to serve communion. And I knelt down in wisdom, just in wisdom, God, speak to me. Tell me how to deliver this that you've placed upon my heart. Because if I just spoke this out, it would crush her. You see, sometimes God will give you the information that you need, but you have to use proper discernment in how to deliver it. Amen? Just don't blurt it, oh, bless God, God's telling me this, and wham! Everything you do must be done in love. If it's not done in love, and you're not thinking of the other person and how they're receiving it, don't even try to deliver it. Let it go. God will find somebody else that needs to do what needs to be done. You can't do it properly. And so as I was there at the altar, kneeling, I said, to her, I said, I looked at her in the eyes. I said, can you look at me, honey? I said, God has given you such a precious gift. And I just sense that you're getting ready to throw it away. She knew what I was talking about. She knew what was going on. She began to weep and cry. And I said, I, I really feel like this is going to be such a blessing to you. Don't throw this gift away that God's getting ready to give you. And see, she knew exactly what was going on. It was delivered properly and in love. And <laughs> nine months later, there she was. Y'all with me? About eight months. There she was, holding a beautiful baby. Isn't that beautiful? A precious gift to the family. They end up loving on. And... Isn't that beautiful? Everybody say Hallelujah. <laughs> God's good. Amen. So you may receive something, but you have to understand it's the way that you've got to properly ingest it, digest it, and process it, and then deliver it, that it can do good for the body. That's a good analogy if you're all listening. Amen. Everybody say hallelujah. So what, what are the gifts given for? It's to form the body. That's what we see here. Uh, now, it says, for by one spirit we're all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greek, whether slaves or free. We've all been made to drink into one spirit. For in fact, the body is not one member, but many. Okay, so we have to understand that God brings all these things together in order that we can properly function and minister the gifts to one another. As the gifts of the spirit come forth, listen. They always come forth with the preaching of the gospel. Everybody say gospel. gospel. Now, Paul said, I teach 
Jesus Christ crucified and the kingdom of God. Everybody say the kingdom of God. There's a difference in the preaching of the kingdom of God and the preaching of the gospel. I mean, the, the gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ. Actually, he taught Jesus, but he preached the kingdom of God. Read it. It's at the end of Corinthians, what it talks about. So, what is the kingdom of God? What is it that we're supposed to be? Jesus said, go into all the world, preach the kingdom. It was the, that's the very thing that, that was preached, and it was literally that God's presence is at hand. The kingdom of God is here. It's dealing with God's presence. And so let's talk about this for a minute. Because the gifts of the Spirit follow the preaching of the kingdom of God. What is the kingdom of God? I've got something you need. It's the display of your own life in a broken world. Isn't this good? Woo, thanks, message. Thank you, Jesus. It's, it's the preaching of the gospel in a broken world. Do you realize that Jesus never talked once as he was preaching about someone being born again? He talked to Nicodemus about it. But everywhere he went, he preached what? Everybody say the kingdom of God. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm getting some strange looks right now. What does that really mean? The kingdom of God is the presence of God in your life that brings about conviction in others. It's the Holy Spirit at work in your life. And see, Jesus was demonstrating that everywhere he went. He was preaching the kingdom of God, and then he was laying on his hands, and people were being healed. Everybody say, Jesus is the door. Jesus is the way to enter into the kingdom of God. To get the, you get people, they, they enter in, but how are they going to know what the life that you and I are living unless it's displayed? Are y'all getting this yet? How is it displayed? It's displayed by the gifts of the Spirit being active in your life. You sit down with someone and you begin to tell them everything that they've ever done. That's what Jesus did with the woman at the well. When you sit down and you begin to demonstrate the kingdom of God and the power of God in your life, let me tell you something. They will get on their knees and they will fall and they will say, God is real. I need this same God that you've got. I need this same anointing that you... I sense the very presence and the anointing of God on you. And because of that, I desire that. How can I have what you have? We want to go out there and shove Jesus down people's throats. You need Jesus, bless God. You need the blood of Jesus, the blood of the cross. Oh, hallelujah. When it's the power and the demonstration of God in your life that will win people for Jesus. Is anybody here? You sit down beside them on a bus or in a car or on a plane and God begins to give you insight into their life. They tell you they have a problem with their knee and you reach over and say, oh, can I pray for you? And they begin to walk, goodness gracious, what's going on? And all of a sudden the power and the demonstration of God is there. What do you do? I want to know this same Jesus that you know. See, so many of us want to get people saved before we minister healing and deliverance to them. How are we doing tonight? Got to get them saved, bless God. God's not going to do anything in their life unless they're saved. How many people did Jesus minister to and they were not saved? He simply went about demonstrating the kingdom of God. How are we doing tonight? Everybody say, I love my preacher. See, I've been going out here, you've got it backwards. You've been walking around here trying, oh, you just need Jesus. You just need, no, you demonstrate the kingdom of God in their life and I guarantee they will come to Jesus Christ. You demonstrate something that they need and that they want. 
They want power. They want authority. They want to be an overcomer in this life. But life keeps on crushing them. And if they can see the kingdom of God at work in your life, then they'll, they'll desire it. And then from that, they'll give their heart to Jesus. Is anybody here? So what have you been doing? What have you been doing? Every church I've pastored, I've tried to demonstrate the kingdom of God. How wonderful and how great the presence of God is. Seen miracle after miracle after miracle and people are drawn to the kingdom of God, to the presence of God being demonstrated. And then after that, they give their life to Jesus. Saw over 100 people in one year in a church give their life to Jesus Christ. Amen. It wasn't Rick Wright. It had nothing to do with it. It was the fact that the kingdom of God was being demonstrated. Y'all getting this? To where His glory and His presence was being seen. And through that, people began to desire to experience Jesus, to, to, to know, who he, know Him as He really is. You see, that's why the gifts of the Spirit need to be in our lives. How many people do you know that are broken, that are hurting, that are suffering, that you could lay your hands on and see the kingdom of God come? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And through that, they would experience the presence of God and the power of God. God wants to show out, you all. <laughs> Y'all hear me? He wants to. He wants to, to show us His glory. He wants to show us His presence. He's just waiting for a, a church that He's established His government upon to simply step out and take the authority that they have to demonstrate it and through that people will come into the kingdom of God. Everybody say the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God, mm. the kingdom of God is not eating or drinking but it's righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. What do people want? They want righteousness. They want the right alignment with God. That's what righteousness is. They want joy. They want peace. But unless you're demonstrating it, how are they going to receive it? How are we doing tonight? Well, tonight we have an awesome, awesome opportunity. Y'all enjoyed this? Let's give God some praise. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your word. It's alive and true. Hallelujah. It's alive, it's alive, it's alive, and it's true. Amen. It's true.